Okay, hello and welcome to today's lesson, which is fire safety. Now your starter question is what three things are needed for a fire? So hopefully you can remember back to last week and you, if I'll give you a clue, it's something to do with a triangle. What three things are needed for a fire? Okay, so pause the video now and then we shall go through the answers afterwards. Right, okay, so hopefully you've managed to remember last week and you've drawn something similar to what I have done here, okay? So obviously the three things that are needed for combustion, obviously fire, we need oxygen, we need heat, and we need a fuel in the form of a hydrocarbon. Okay, now to push yourself even further, Okay, develop. How can a fire be put out? Okay, so what needs to happen in order for us to extinguish a fire? Okay, so again, pause the video before we go through the answers. Right, okay, so to answer our how can we, how can a fire be put out question, we can see arrow pointing to our answer here. So at least one factor needs to be removed. And the factors that we are referring to, of course, are the oxygen, the heat, or the fuel. If you remove any one of these, then we are able to put a fire out. Right, okay, so on to the following slide. You have using the correct fire extinguishers. Okay, so we have five fire extinguishers. We have water, dry powder, foam, CO2, and wet chemical. Now, I leave this up to you. You can either print it off and stick it into your book, or you can draw it and make sure, obviously, you use the correct colors for the different ribbons, okay? And then make a list of what they are used for, okay? Because put in the wrong extinguisher on a particular type of fire could potentially do more harm than good, okay? Once you've done that, okay, uh, you can move on to the next slide, okay? And this is just gonna be more of a, a recap as to what the different symbols mean, okay? So you'll get a selection of symbols that you'd see on labels around the classroom, around workplaces, okay? So what you need to do is to basically name them, okay? So you don't have to draw them out. In your book, you could just number them one, two, three, etc. Put your answer down and then green pen if you do make any mistakes. So the first one, for example, we've got a big black cross. What is that, okay? So you put your answer down. If you was wrong, or well, if you was correct, sorry, give yourself a tick. Fantastic, well done. If you was wrong, then correct it with green pen for me. Okay, so once you've completed that, you should come to a slide which is titled Task 2. Okay, so you've got eight questions there. Okay, so answer those questions as best you can. And then on the following slide, okay, you will have your answers. Okay, so again, just as previously, if you got them correct, fantastic, well done, give yourself a tick. If you got them wrong, however, make sure you correct your mistakes with, with green pen, okay, so that you have the correct answers for the future. Once you've done that and you move on to the next slide, you'll come to the plenary, okay? So again, you'll have two symbols, what this means, this is dangerous because, okay? So what does the, um, the symbol mean and why would this be dangerous to you or people around you? And then on to the final slide, okay? It is a quick research task. So you've got types of fire. You have a chip pan fire, plain fuel, an electrical fire, and a forest fire. Now, unless you go into aviation when you're older, then you're very unlikely to come across this. But a chip pan fire and an electrical fire, chances are you may come across them in your lifetime, especially a chip pan fire, okay? And then obviously with the rest of the table, you need to research how you would put that fire out. Okay, so I can tell you for one, if it's a chip, vampire, um, a chip pan fire, do not put water on it, okay? If you've ever been to, um, to the fire um, services and they do the demonstrations, they will always do a chip pan fire and you will see that the flame grows exponentially. Uh, and again, once you have done that, okay, you've got your plenary answer on the following slide. Again, if you've got them right, fantastic, give yourself a tick. If you've got them wrong, please, green pen any mistakes okay so that was your fire safety lesson i hope you enjoyed it and i shall see you next time right okay so here obviously we have a bunsen burner now 
This is, going, is obviously an example of exothermic reaction because obviously the heat, the flame, is hotter than its surroundings. Now obviously at the moment it is on its safe flame. If I turn, you can now see that we've got it onto the roaring flame because we have two cones. Now what I'm going to do is add some, well add a magnesium strip. Obviously, hopefully you all know what should happen, but make sure you don't look directly at the screen because it might be quite bright, okay? And obviously this is just a bit more of a visual representation of what um, exothermic reactions would look like. Okay, and we'll do one more because why not? Okay, so that there is a visual representation of an exothermic re reaction. So remember to summarize that the flame is hotter than its surroundings. If this was an ice cube that I had sat next to it, obviously it would start to melt, but that is drawing in energy. So it'd be cooler than its surroundings. Another example, which you see in everyday life, would be photosynthesis. That is another example of an endothermic reaction.